Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space and some new Halloween cards using older product. Um, an oldie but goodie favorite of mine, the Honey Bee Stamps Lovely Layers Coneflower die set. I've done many videos using this set. I've also done a Halloween video. Um, I think it was in last year's. I forget. Um, I will link to my lovely layers playlist because Honey Bee has many and I have done many videos. So I'll have that linked at the end. But I combined it with a couple of their older, I think these came out last year, Halloween stamp and die set. I also used some of the new Distress Mica Stains. My order showed up. I'm excited. So I used like mica stains and glow in the dark embossing powder and distress inks and i am like stained and inky and messy and i had a lot of fun making these so keep watching and i will show you guys how i made them so my first step for these cards was all the die cutting of the lovely layers coneflower and if you are not familiar with honeybee's lovely layers sets they're all thought out for you I love it. <laughs> you die cut everything once. And for the most part, they are super simple to um, assemble as well. They basically just go large, just the smallest, especially this set. It is unbelievably easy. So I had already die cut the first three flowers and leaves. And then I just had like random scraps that I was using up. So I, you know, lined everything up so I can die cut all of this in one pass and got all the pieces lined up just like so. And then ran them through my little platinum six, um, die cut machine. And out of habit, this is what I always do, even though like a set like this, I pretty much know it like the back of my hand. Um, I still like to, even before I had ink or anything, is put them all together the way it's supposed to be so that I kind of have a visual because it also depends too on how I'm planning on if I'm going to ink them or color or whatever. And it's just nice to see like all the layers together. So um, all of Honey Bee's die sets now the packaging has the outline on it. This is, again, this is an old set. I forget how many years ago this came out. And I just traced around the dies on the packaging there with a Sharpie so that I knew where to put them, you know, so I'm not sitting there fiddling forever <laughs> trying to get all the dies to fit, you know? So that's, I love all the newer packaging. And I'm not sure if it got transitioned to like the older sets like this, but yeah, all our packaging now has like all the outlines already like pre-printed which just saves me an extra step and I love it because I keep all my data stored in the original packaging I don't bother fiddling with the the nicer setups of you know putting it all in like proper sleeves and all the things I just, I just don't bother <laughs> I just don't got time for that anyway for the inking I'm going to use distress inks and I got my big waffle flower grip mat here just to kind of hold things in place. And I'm using my waffle flower um, size one or shader one brushes. And, and yeah, distress inks. Super simple. These are going to look like an absolute hot mess. I get comments about that a lot. Hence me like really emphasizing it because like people will contact me really and be like, I just, I thought it looked so ugly. And then it all came together. And I'm like, well, yeah, that was the whole point. <laughs> so anyway, these are, these are going to look just awful, really, until they're assembled. So, because I'm just working on, you know, individual layers. And because a lot of the, the parts of these end up getting covered up, I am not going to worry about like getting a nice blend or making them look pretty because you're only going to see bits and pieces. And with all of the lovely layers dies, you can always pretty much tell which parts are going to show from like the bottom layers because there is um, like embossing and piercing details and stuff that are on those parts. The rest is just like basically like smooth cardstock. Like there's nothing there. So you kind of just know, but that's also why I do lately, you know, put them on like sort of assemble it right after die cutting. So again, you can kind of see it's like, okay, this part's not showing. 
doesn't matter. This part is, etc. And even when inking, I did this. So with this first one, I was just getting everything, like coloring, adding it all up, doing my thing. I will link, link to and list all the specific colors. But for the greens, I was using Twisted Citron and Mowed Lawn. And the purples, it was Wilted Violet and Villainous Potion. And these were actually inspired by flowers I have planted. Um, they're not cone flowers. They're is it Osteopernum. I forget. I was going to Google it before I sat down to do this voiceover. But now I forget. But whatever. Similar flowers. But I have ones that they, they're like lime green towards the center. And then they go either pink or purple at the edges of the petals, which is just fun. And it's even more funny that someone messaged me not too long ago with a picture of theirs that were the purple and green ones, you know, as inspiration for me. And I was like, oh, already on it. <laughs> no worries. I'm, I'm, I'm going there. And I wanted to do Halloween theme. You could totally not do, you could do this and just not do Halloween theme. That'd be great. But you guys know, I love Halloween. And this is just, a fun way to use some like mixing both Halloween and non Halloween supplies. So I worked my way around like those first all the the first flower basically. And then I laid out those layers there at the top. And then I just use that as my guide. It's like a little template. It's like, okay, I know where I'm going to add color. So I don't even need to think about it anymore. I'm just like slap on the green here, slap on the purple here, done. And this is sped up. I don't move this quickly in real life. But you know, you get the gist of it. And then I did the exact same thing on the remaining two flowers, but this time I went with pinks because I can, why not? And for that, I did kitsch flamingo and picked raspberry and again, followed my little template of <laughs> what looks like an absolute hot mess <laughs> and just did the greens first and then added the pinks. So this was also why I chose these brushes and to do it in this manner because I originally like and I, I used just like thin watercolor paper for all these because I originally was going to do ink smushing which would have looked fabulous but when you're mixing greens and purples or greens and pinks you get sludge and not the end of the world especially with Halloween stuff because that's another reason why I love making Halloween projects is you can get messy with it and it's you know it's intentional however I was like, with the space I have, you know, the size of these flowers, the space I've got ink smushing would actually be quite difficult to get like both colors on the petals, etc. So I thought about it and I kept kind of fighting it. And then I was like, no, if I do it this way with the brushes, I can get the colors without ending up with just an absolute hot mess. And I'm still going to manage to get some splattery, inky, messy goodness on these regardless. So... After I did the flowers, I started in on the leaves. And the only thing I did differently with these is I brought in Rustic Wilderness because it's oh, chef's kiss. I have talked about this a million times. My absolute favorite go-to green combo is Twisted Citron and Rustic Wilderness. And then I did add Mowed Lawn as well. Those three together, wonderful. Absolutely love it. Don't know what it is. I just, I just do. So I did the exact same thing. Just slapped on the lighter green, added the mode lawn, and then really went in with that rustic wilderness and pulled it out even further because I wanted the leaves to be darker. And also just not at all worried. I don't want a, I don't need a perfect blend. I don't want a perfect blend. I just don't care. It's not going to matter because I'm going to add like mica stains and splatter with water and all the things. So it's like when I say slap the color on, I mean it. So I did all that. I left the leaves on the grip mat. I pulled out in my flower sack cloth just to keep me from getting a mess absolutely everywhere. And my first bit of splatter is Specimen Distress Mica Stain. If you've never used the mica stains, they are fun. Tim Holtz has videos explaining all the, the product info. I'm not going to go into that, but basically they are just... Um, spray stains with mica shimmer in them and they're gorgeous they're gorgeous they're fabulous they're beautiful there are a ton of colors now for the halloween ones ranger re-released the previous years this year so they're all available which hooray i have backups of all of these they're beautiful these look especially right now this looks like a hot mess it does the mica stains with more than anything else you want to let them dry it they're they look completely different 
dry when they're dry versus when they're wet like right now this looks like almost like black you know which is still fine because again Halloween I kind of liked I was like who these leaves look diseased <laughs> this is perfect <laughs> seriously I was having so much fun so I added that uh, specimen mica stain I added water with my distress sprayer I dabbed it up a bit with a tissue just just because you know and then I set them all aside to dry and oh man when they're dry oh, the shimmer I will and I will show at the end of the video like I'll turn the flashlight on I I could not do these justice with the video and with um the photos or anything but man these were fun so the leaves set those aside to dry now for the purple flowers I used the new uh ominous twilight mica stain this is a deep purple oh lovely this one was also difficult to catch the actual like they're like shimmery glittery amazingness and it's just fun so I did the exact same thing I just you have to shake them up really really well every time you use them while you're using them because the shimmer just wants to settle in the bottom that isn't the end of the world with the way I'm using them right now like just opening the nozzle like that and splattering but if you want to spray with them you want to shake them up really 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 well otherwise you'll clog the nozzle so that's just the nature of working with stuff like this it's just you're kind of fighting the shimmer even though you want the shimmer <laughs> but it just likes to settle so I splattered these as well with that I added splat some water you know picked it up with a tissue which also kind of made you know a mess on them I was fine with it if this is working this is fun so for the pink ones I used cocktail party mica stain this is one of the Christmas ones it is still available and it'll be linked with all the supplies and same thing had to you just you have to shake the devil out of it really um to get all that shimmer dispersed and then same thing opened it up splattered this all over all of these added some splats of water with my distress sprayer picked it up with a tissue so I've just got I've got water droplets I've got splatter all things and then set all those pieces aside to dry and then I remembered oh yeah I still had the flower centers to do <laughs> so laid out those pieces and I did ink blending on those with um, vintage photo ground espresso and black soot uh, distress inks and my little my little waffle flower brushes and same thing not worried at all about any sort of like smooth blend just slap color on it's not gonna matter so the the parts of the flower centers that are gonna be on the top I did just the vintage photo and the ground espresso this layer that's gonna go underneath I did the ground espresso and black soot and then I took a little bit of the black soot and also added it to the top layer just a bit and then once I've got um, all the ink blended onto these I'll use the fallen acorn distress mica stain which is such a pretty color they're all you can't go wrong with any of them seriously the mica stains like you got, and I talked about these in a recent in a recent video um, I, I have them on display like right behind me when you guys see it on manger on the shelf I, in rainbow order of course <laughs> and now I'm like crap because they weren't going to release new colors and then Ranger told Tim to do more so he's released these six new ones for Halloween and then we're supposed to get six more for Christmas and then that's officially supposed to be it regardless I'm I'm happy I just need to like make more space <laughs> to put them all out <laughs> So anywho, I used the fallen acorn, splattered that all over, added water, picked it up with the tissue. So I've got just that texture and all the good things. Set all this aside, wiped off my grit mat, um, and then we're good to go. And now it's time to actually adhere this hot mass that will create these really funky flowers. So like I said, you just go largest to smallest. That's it. Everything these all of the like lovely layer sets they all just fit together they are just simple i i can't even with any of it there's just all the connection points it, it just makes sense honestly because again if i can do it without having to follow you know a video or anything like that it was like i can just die cut slap them together be done love it love it so that's all you do largest to smallest 
And once you get the final layer on, everything starts to make sense. It all starts to look a little more cohesive and life is good. So I adhered all the, the four layers together and then added the flower centers. And then once these are added, it just makes sense, you know? And same thing, they, they line up perfectly. So I did that with the purple ones. I did it with the pink ones. Didn't bother filming that. It's the exact same thing. And they are, they're just fun. Yeah, what else can I say? So got them all adhered. So I've got my little like shimmery, splattery Halloween flowers, you know? So, and the leaves, the leaves, oh, they're fun. Like, again, hard to really show on camera, but like all those like dark splotchy bits are shimmery, like so shimmery. So did all of that. And then for my backgrounds, I'm using the Happy Halloween stamp set. And I pulled out my Misty and I've got a couple of A2 sized pieces of black cardstock. So four and a quarter by five and a half. And then this big web background from that Happy Halloween stamp set. So I got that lined up on top of the cardstock. I use my anti-static powder tool on the cardstock that just keeps the embossing powder from sticking to where I don't want it. And then I'm going to ink up and stamp this big spider web with uh, white pigment ink. And I'm going to ink it up and stamp it several times to get like full coverage. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it's just, it's a big stamp and pigment ink and all the things. And then I'm going to heat emboss this with glow in the dark embossing powder. I love pulling out my glow in the dark embossing powder for Halloween projects. That's pretty much the only times I use it and I love it. So glow in the dark embossing powder, there's three different brands that I am aware of and that I've used that have it. I will link to all three because it just depends. And I spilled it like the klutz that I am. Um, they all work the exact same. It's they're, they're great. The thing to note with specifically glow in the dark embossing powder is it's a bit finicky with stamped images. Um, generally I use it more like I used it in a recent video where I just coat like an entire die cut piece with it that sort of a thing, I'll layer it up. With stamped images, it can get a little finicky. It, there's something about the, the like the glow in the dark properties that it just, even with really sticky ink, like a pigment ink, etc., it doesn't want to cling as much. Like almost think of it as like a, you know, with chunky embossing powders, if you've ever worked with those, those can be really hard to like get to stay in place until you melt them. It's kind of the same thing. However, Stamping the, an image like this with thicker lines works great. If you're trying to use a really detailed image, something really finely detailed, that sort of a thing, and gl specifically glow in the dark embossing powder, you're going to have a hard time. It just, it just is what it is. So I love it though. And I, I, again, I was able to get a photo of it in the dark with these glowing in the dark and they're, they are just so fun. So I will have that photo at the end as well. And it'll be on my blog. So anywho, after I heat emboss those backgrounds, I put them in my splat box and I sprayed the backgrounds with that specimen distress mica stain. Look at it. Isn't it amazing? Oh, love, love. <laughs> uh, see, I had so much fun. Anyway, I cleaned off the background stamp because it had all that white pigment ink on it. And then my card bases are going to be top folding uh, A2 white note cards. So five and a half by four and a quarter. And I folded the card base inside out and then just used some easy C tape to hold it closed and then inked up and stamped that, that spider web onto what will be the inside of the card with Simon Says Stamps flannel positively saturated ink. So just a nice light gray ink. And then did the exact same thing with the second card. And you can't, Oh no, you can kind of see it on camera. I managed to like smear some of that ink on the inside of the card. And I was like, whatever, going with it. I'll cover it up later. <laughs> Wasn't that big of a deal, honestly. And it's not like super noticeable, but I set those aside. I grabbed another piece of black cardstock and I'm using one of the big happy Halloween sentiments from that same stamp set. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the background. So I use my anti-static powder tool and I'm inking up and stamping the sentiment um, several times with the white pigment ink. And this is where I should have done one sentiment at a time. You can't tell, you guys can't tell, I could. Um, 
again, you got to move like not necessarily super quick with glow in the dark embossing powder, but it works if you just do one thing at a time, like stamp your image, coat it with the glow in the dark embossing powder, melt it, go on to the next one. Doing just even both like this, the second one or the one I stamped first, um, you know, the stamp was just starting to dry a bit. So it missed spots with the embossing powder. I'm only mentioning that just in case people have issues with it. It's just, it is, it's a little bit finicky to work with, but in my opinion, it's worth it because it's fun. And then I did the exact same thing. I put them in my, the pieces in my splat box and sprayed them with that specimen distress mica stain. Let that sit for a minute just to kind of, you know, soak into the cardstock. And then I used a tissue to dab up anything sitting on top of the embossing because, you know, melted heat embossing resists, you know, things you spray on top of them. So I dabbed that up and then just wiped the embossing. No matter what, this isn't going to be super crisp like white emboss powder because it's glow in the dark embossing powder. I'm fine with that because it's going to just go really nicely with the background. So there was a method to the madness. And once everything was dry and good to go, I used um, the coordinating wafer die to die cut both of these sentiments. So I got those die cut. And then on the insides of the cards, this is where I can cover up my little smear. There's um, little individual, you know, spider stamps and whatnot. So I stamped a couple of these with VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink and then strategically stamped one of the individual spiders and it covered up the oopsie. So we were good. And then I set it aside. And then I pulled out, it's a toil, yeah, the Toil and Trouble die set. I had originally only pulled it out because there was a little spider wafer die in that set and I die cut that. And then I was looking at this little web wafer die and I was looking at it and I was like huh that's like the perfect size to go with these flowers I was like "Ooh, what if I die cut this from vellum and like stick it amongst the petals so that's what I did I die cut a bunch of scraps of vellum with that little little spider web um wafer die and then just kind of gently pried apart some of the little spots here on these flowers because like they're glued together with liquid glue like they're not those pieces aren't going anywhere but I only need a tiny little dab of glue on this vellum. Like that's it. Tiniest little amount. So I would just take a little, little drop of glue, you know, pry up a tiny little spot on these florals wherever I wanted to place it and then just stick it in there. And that's all it needs because vellum is super lightweight. It's not going anywhere. So I just kept repeating the process, trimming off a little bit of the little web die cut just so I could you know stick it in where I wanted it and yeah glued that into place on all of these little flowers so now not only are they like multicolor splatter crazy goodness they also have these little vellum webs stuck into them and yeah this was fun <laughs> So I got all those adhered into place. And then like I've always mentioned, this is one of the things I love when I'm doing more than one card is especially if there's florals involved, I can use one to kind of lay everything out, figure out how I want things to go. And then I can just use my second card to actually adhere in place, you know, using the first one as my guide. And then I go back and adhere everything to the first one. So that's what I did. I got everything laid out and then I'm just going to adhere everything into place with craft tacky glue. Get the florals in place, the leaves in place. Do that to both of these card fronts. And then um, the sentiments, I put uh, waffle flowers, uh, thinner black foam strips on the back of. And I did that with the little spiders that I die cut as well. I just put little little bits of that foam tape on the back of them and then pop those into place on the florals as well and then once everything was adhered I just flipped over the card front and trimmed off anything that was hanging over the edges with my scissors and then had to gently uh, peel up that sentiment and fix it because it was crooked so very gentle with that because the foam tape is like once it's secure it's secure so Repeated the process on the second card front, got the sentiment in place, the little spiders in place, and then flipped that over, trimmed off the excess. And then I could adhere these to my card bases and I didn't trim anything down. So these will completely cover the card fronts. So craft tacky glue again, 
And then I lined that up and I just made sure that I actually adhered it to like the card front and that, you know, you open it and you'll see the spider web, etc. So, because yeah, it would really suck to adhere it to the back or upside down, you know, been there, done that. <laughs> So once I got those adhered into place, these cards are complete. Serious. I had so much fun. I just, yeah, suck at like really showing proper like the shimmer and the fabulousness. You can kind of see it here, like just the glitter and shimmer from the mica stains on like the background. And it's hardest to see on the splatters on the petals, but it's there too. Like it is all shimmery, glittery goodness. And then, yeah. The happy Halloween sentiment and the web on these glow in the dark and it's just fun. So like I always do, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. In the blog post, I'll have all the pictures of the cards that you can click on and check out. I will have picture links to all the supplies I used. That'll all be in the blog post. I will also have the supply list listed and linked directly below the video as well. And then there will be a link to my Halloween 2023 playlist along with that lovely layers playlist. That'll be at the end of this video. So you guys can check them out if you missed any of them. There's the glow in the dark. Is it not fabulous? So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, for thumbs upping, commenting, subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you. And I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.